How to Game the UTR by a UTR Founder. That's me. So, um, first of all, hey, thanks for subscribing to this YouTube channel. It's over there somewhere. So subscribe to Cummings Athletics on YouTube. Um, now let's talk about game in the UTR. So in 2007, I was there. I was in the room when uh, the algorithm was created, when we found it, the UTR. It was myself and five former Old Dominion players and an old wise man named Dave. So, um, and I remember that, that Alessandra Concado, who probably was the smartest one in the room at the time, he mentioned the word algorithm. And, uh, we had a meeting near Old Dominion University. Uh, I think it was at his home. And he mentioned the word algorithm. And both Dave and I just sat there and we just pretended to know what he was talking about because we didn't know what an algorithm was at the time in 2007. Now there's a lot of algorithms, right? It's a common word. So, and over the years, and even today, um, the algorithm um, of UTR is probably tweaked, modified, as in most algorithms like Google. Um, you always tweak it and modify it. That, that, that's kind of what you do. Um, so, what is the algorithm? And it's, it's kind of a, it's very simple. So the algorithm, if, if you play as a player, if you play a 6-4, six, 6-3 six, match, that match is deemed competitive. If you play a 6-3, six, 6-2 six, match, that match is uh, deemed routine. You routine the person. There was more than... There was multiple service breaks, net service breaks, it is. And then 6-2, six, 6-1, six, that's decisive. So 6-2, six, 6-1, six, or, or anything less than that, that's, that's extremely decisive. So you got those three, you know, those, those three kinds of scores, and that's really what it's based on. So, um, so probably if you're competitive, let's say if you're playing a, a, a player that's one or two levels higher than you, then, um, and you have a competitive match, then that probably means you're trending to that level. So if you were a level 10 and you played a level 11 player and it was 6-3, 6-4 or closer, you know, 6-4, 7-5, etc. If you did that, then um, you're trending, your rating is trending in that direction. Um, or if you played someone that's at your level. So if a level 10 player was playing a level 10 player, then, um, and you beat them either routinely or decisive, that would make the, you know, that would make you trend to, to a higher level. So that's how that works. So um, there's three demographics in this uh, UTR obsession. And, um, and they are, um, you got players, future college players, you got current college players, and you have former college players. So you got that, so you got the recruits, you got the players, and then you got the former players. Three kinds. Now you can guess probably where the obsession lies, and the answer is yes. It's in the future um, college players in the recruits. That's where the obsession is, and that's where the desire, the market to gain the UTR comes from. It comes from the recruits and the recruits coaches and parents and maybe even the grandparents. Who knows? So, um, so that's, that's uh, where that obsession for gaming comes from, and this should help you a lot for you, you recruits out there. So, um, Here's one way to game it. Um, if there's a fear of being competitive or losing to the same level, then default, just default. So if you're going to play that person in a tournament, just come up with some reason to default, you know, speeding ticket, um, emergency, whatever, just default. Now, 
there's only one bad thing about that. Uh, the player's going to be labeled, you know, and since you're a future college player, the coach is probably going to get wind of this situation about you defaulting, but you can game it and not play it. You can default. But uh, the coach is probably going to get wind of that and he's going to label you and unless you're going to build uh, build him a, him or her a new tennis facility or, or an indoor tennis facility, that's probably not going to help you in the recruiting process. So that gaming situation of defaulting, probably not the best option. Now, um, the second way to, to game it is you start to play the match. And if the match is not going in your direction, you know, playing a lower player and God forbid they start to beat you. If they beat you or you're losing or it's just too close, fake an injury. Faking the injury is key. Now, um, try to fake the injury. When you fake it, try to do it with some kind of like an Academy Award performance. At least make it where you're running for a ball or, or something. And, um, and make sure when you fake an injury, like if it's a leg injury, that you limp off. You, you, after the match, you, you know, when you when you walk off, you got to limp off a little bit and keep that limp going. Probably want to get someone to video you and maybe uh, maybe video you and put that on social media of you limping, you know, kind of thing. So the injury, faking the injury, that's that's the second way. And now, now the problem with that one is you might get labeled again, like uh, a coach. Uh, whether you fake the injury or not, they need the player to be available, right? So and they need the player to be available. So the injury thing might not work out because you're a recruit and the coach, uh, they don't like damaged goods. So that's, that's not it. So here is the real way to gain the UTR. It's not to use the UTR. Just don't use it, okay? So... By not using it, you got to substitute something else, right? So because you're so used to in that recruiting process of thinking the coach is looking at your UTR, you think the world's looking at your UTR. Heck, you even identify yourself times you UTR. You shake hands with the coach and say, hi, I'm a level 10.4 or I'm a 9.7, you know, or whatever. You use the, you use the decimal points. So, um, so the key thing in gaming it, just eliminate it. Don't use it. So what do you use in instead? What do you use instead of the UTR? You use the six, you've heard of the six degrees of separation. And if you haven't heard of it, your parents have, and you can Wikipedia it. So there's the six degrees of um, separation, or some people say the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, meaning that it, it takes you six people to get to, you have a friend that knows somebody that knows somebody that someone, boom, they, they, they know Kevin Bacon, right? Something like that. Now, the, um, the six degrees, that's probably a little bit too much. Uh, I've heard some tennis players do the six degrees. This person beat that person who beat that person who beat that person who beat that person who beat Bjorn Borg, okay? So that's a little too much. So what I like to use to substitute to really gain the UTR is uh, one or two degrees of separation to a current college player. One or two degrees of separation to a current college player. Um, that's called Cummings. That's a Cummings Athletics Recruiting Law. So when I'm, when I'm mentoring and providing leadership to recruits and there's families, uh, that's what we're looking to get. We're looking to get one or two degrees uh, of separation to a current college player. And again, that's, that's law. What I'm, what I'm giving you is a law. It's not a recommendation. It's, it's like a prescription. It's a law, okay? So um, how does that work? So we're going to use UCLA, for example. You got Billy Martin and you got Stella Sampras. So if we can have some matches against, if you could play every one of Billy Martin's top six players, that will tell the story, right? 
maybe you maybe you beat the five player, maybe you get de decisively beat by the one player. Um, you have some competitive matches against the three or four. That, that tells the story. Um, I'm not, I don't know how much scholarship, um, you know, there's some detail in there that, that Billy's going to offer you, but, you know, that's it. Now, if you can't do that, so let's say you can't get those kinds of matches, then do, get the match and you really want to go to UCLA, then play Southern Cal because Southern Cal plays UCLA twice. And now that's two degrees of separation. So maybe you beat the number four player, and then that number four player has a close match, but loses against UCLA player. That tells the story. And it doesn't matter if it's division one, two, three. Um, you just got to get in that community and get those matches. Sometimes you can find those matches in UTR tournaments. Uh, sometimes you can find it just by approaching them. Have a, have a practice match with that person. You know, this... NIL deal, you can actually pay players now for a parents. I paid a few myself. Locally, I've, I've gotten a level 13 player for a couple hundred dollars all day. Play, played whole afternoon for me for that. So um, same thing with Stella. So Stella Sampers. If you have uh, some one degree or two degrees of separation, your UTR is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. That's how you game it. You tell the coach a story, you, you know? So, and the story is you're using names and scores. And that's kind of how it works. And what I'm giving you, this is law, you know? So anyway, if I can help you in the recruiting process, you know, just give me a call. I'm not hard to find. I'm not hard to find at all. And thanks for subscribing to this uh YouTube channel, and I hope you like my new Lacoste grip. It's very nice, very nice.